We've got another localizer segment, and I know there's been a lot of news about this lately. And to be fair, I've also covered the Stephen He and Natalie Reynolds stuff recently, as well as the crashing of Tencent and NetEase over in China. Still, we're once again back at it on the localizer topic. It's a very interesting one for me to see going around so much these days, because we've talked about localizer corruption for years on the channel, so seeing more awareness to it all is certainly nice, as it is some important stuff. And for anyone new to the localizer topic, I also have a playlist for convenience, compiling various localization issues. And so far, there's 23 different videos in the playlist. 23. And I think I may have even missed a few. <laughs> Anyways, I know there's a lot to catch up on, so I just wanted to make this PSA to help new people out if they're still catching up to all this stuff, now you know about the playlist and all that. And there's also another reason. In this video, we're about to go over a clip that I actually talked about years ago on the channel too, right in the middle of the Vic situation. So some of you might remember this. And as I said on my Twitter account earlier today, I do remember covering this clip, but it's even worse than I remembered, which is saying a lot, because I remember it being pretty dang bad. So if you haven't seen this clip before, hope you're ready. <laughs> and if you have seen it before, well, let's have a little trip down memory lane. So the doctor had said to Yellow Flash, Hey Flash, now that we're talking about anime localizers, let's remind the world how the Dragon Maid translator, Jamie Markey, responded to criticism. The insanity in this clip is beyond human comprehension. It's a stroll going? of power, and I appreciate it. Well, uh, I'm kind of scared to ask this question now because I don't want to bring them in the room. Um, uh -oh. So okay. this is more directed at Jamie, but all of you can answer. Go, Jamie, all of you go. I'm excited like, uh, about it. I'm ready to bring down the room. Let's do we it. We need a spotlight. Um, so oh, Funimation has come under, let's call it criticism oh, for criticism. how they choose to adapt their scripts oh, for like a couple of shows. Oh, like unnecessary hate. Yeah, got it. Yeah, um, and a lot of that, I feel, is directed at you unfairly. Thank and, you. Uh, <laughs> So how, how would you like to respond to that kind of criticism? To the criticism? Like, I have a vagina. Deal with it. <laughs> like, it's honestly, that's the truth. Uh, I am a woman. I am a funny woman. We are all talented, funny, powerful women. We are out here. It's going to happen. Deal with it. I'm sorry you're not getting laid. It's not about you. Move on. That's my reaction. All right. All right. There were a lot it's of very angry Reddit comments that, that winter. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. Anybody else have anything to add? To I think no? you nailed it. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for thank allowing you. me to say that. She does? Yes. Hello. You get a lot of hate online. Oh my god, it's ridiculous. I'm and, sorry, I but didn't also, hear the question, like, she just told me that happened. Oh, yeah, we'll talk about it later. But here's my feeling. Anytime I make, like... If I'm making misogynists and Nazis angry, then I'm doing all right. Because yes. <laughs> we don't, I mean, honestly, we don't want them associated with our fandom. They are not representative of us, and they will stand out and try to own this fandom. And I'm like, you don't realize these are amazing people with lots of backgrounds and lots of different cultures and, and just an amazing array of, of strength and power within them. And you do not represent the people I know. Mm -hmm. So just, yeah. I feel strongly about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like I said, I've seen that clip before. I've talked about it before. And even still, seeing it again now, I'm in like, I'm in disbelief at how bad of a response that is. I mean, that's insane. Now, here's the full context, by the way. That isn't just some average tier localizer. As Tadakta mentioned, that's Jamie Markey, a voice actress who has also done work as an ADR director and scriptwriter for anime under Funimation. So people were criticizing Funimation for some of the lines in their dubs, such as the infamous Dragon Maid clip, and how the dub changed Lukoa to rant about the patriarchy, completely out of context from the original line. Many people took issue with that change saying that it was Forrest, completely out of character for Lukoa, etc, etc. And like, there's even a Reddit post with over 4,700 upvotes from a self-proclaimed feminist who said that line even upset them. And what is Jamie Markey's response to all that? Well, as you saw, in a completely bizarre and creepy move, she makes it sexual, starts talking about her anatomy, and tells people to get laid, like, seriously weird and creepy and unprofessional and unhinged. Like, there's so many words you can fill the blank in with there. <laughs> and as you heard, she also didn't stop there. Because uh, if you point out these bad lines, you're also apparently a misogynistic Nazi. And now that the clip you just saw is going around again, what is Jamie Markey's current response? Is there one? 
Well, uh, yes, there is. Here you go. She retweets something that she said back in October of 2019, again, in the middle of the Vic situation, when people were also talking about that clip, where she essentially brags about butchering Japanese intellectual property, butchering the source material. So now she's retweeting that and saying, for those who maybe forgot. In other words, she has not changed for the best over all these years, apparently. Now, apparently she still stands behind the trash fire that she created before and all those creepy and extremist things that she said in response. Now, I'm also reasonable enough to acknowledge something that people defending her are saying, where they essentially say that the examples of her bad scripts are minimal in comparison to other scripts that she's done that are allegedly good or at least fine. Well, hypothetically, if that's the case, and if she also apologized for her terrible work in the past and said that she won't butcher the source material like that again, okay. But the issue now is she's tripling down on the things that she said in the past. Like I said, it's not like she's saying she was sorry for that and, and vowing that her other scripts won't be like that anymore. Furthermore, none of that excuses what she said on that panel in that clip that we saw a moment ago, where she smeared so many innocent people with her buzzwords and her weird move of making it sexual. Just really awful stuff to say on a panel in response to that criticism. And yet she apparently still stands by it all. Like all people were asking for is accurate translations. And she went off and said all that. I just don't know how she doesn't feel ashamed of herself to have reacted in that way and saying all those things. Like zero self-reflection. People like, hey, can we have accurate translations? And she's all like, I'm a strong, powerful woman. She starts going off about her anatomy, starts calling people like misogynistic Nazis. <laughs> just because people ask for accurate translations. Like, I can't get over that, man. That's so freaking crazy. Now, moving right along, we actually have a second localization-related topic to go over in this video. If you've tuned into my segments on this stuff, you likely remember me discussing the Trails of Cold Steel situation, where Nissa localizers literally went on stream and just flat out said they will remove jokes from Japan that they deem offensive. Well, here's the actual clip. <laughs> yeah. Um, so things like we try to kind of work around um, things that might be a little sexist, for example, like in Japanese humor. Um, activate fire. And with those things, we like to try to make now. it more culturally appropriate An for opening. our players. And that doesn't mean it has to be made less Let's funny go. either. No, not at all. We can work in something even better sometimes. Let's go. <laughs> yep, that clip speaks volumes. And I have talked about that one many times in other segments, so I'm not going to add too much more on that in this one. I just wanted to play the actual clip for you guys this time. So yeah, this stuff is crazy. Once again, it's also important to keep in mind, the issue is all of this stuff with localizers combined. Like, if someone just watches one of my videos, for example, they'll get an idea, but not get the full scope of how rampant this stuff is and how deep it goes in the industry. And that's actually why I made that playlist to help catch people up. And the idea to make a playlist for all the localizer stuff wasn't even mine, actually. It was a suggestion I got in a comment on a video where I had mentioned that I feel bad repeating things I've said before on topics. But there's also some people who tune in that don't have certain info, that haven't seen the old segments. So at times, it's a fine line to balance, as I don't want to be redundant for people who know these things. Yet I also want to be sure that people are on the same page. So hopefully I've been doing a good job balancing all that. And hopefully the coverage has been good overall. I mean, it does seem like people have been enjoying the segments, so that does make me happy. And as always, thank you for tuning in. And consider letting me know your thoughts in the comments. Also, consider liking and or subscribing for more segments like this. And that helps the channel out greatly, so I appreciate you. And I'll see you in the next one.